Hello, this is Harker Dabin, and today we are going to be reading Backroom's Entities. Entity 52, 53, 54, 55, and 56. And if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Starting with Entity 52 called Noel 06. Lives in level 78. It's apparently enigma enigmatic. Oh, this is apparently the clearest known photo of Noel 06. Description. Noel 06 has been identified to be a black hole of varying size, causing it to change black hole classifications consistently. Null 06, unlike typical black holes, can be seen by the unaided eye as well as being able to be photographed with an ordinary camera. It has been noted that Null 06 is gravitational tidal effects. The tidal force is a gravitational effect that stretches a body along the line towards center of mass of another body to, to a gradient difference in strength and other bodies' gravitational force. Constantly change at varying rates despite its mass at the time of change. Behaviors. When in a dormant state, null 06 will retain the size it had during its prior active state. In its dormancy, its gravitational tidal effect remains continuously continu fluctuates at indeterminate Intervals. Due to recent findings, Null 06 has been required to undergo a form of magnetic reconnection. That's magnetic reconception. The process of consuming celestial bodies, electromagnetic fields escaping the black hole and lining up with surrounding plasma energy, which is then blasted away or reconsumed. Magnetic reconsumption is a term created by wanderers studying Null 06, saying that the process is similar to magnetic reconnection. However, it consumes the previously ejected electromagnetic fields and forms its own electric magnetic field with them. As of writing, Null 06's electromagnetic field has been measured to be approximately 1.95 T, around three times the intensity of Earth's magnetic field. However, this field has been observed to intensify by 0.10 NT at an interval of approximately three months at a time. After its previously mentioned state of dormancy, Null 06 will relocate to another area within level 78. It was originally it thought that Null 06 flowed to its new location at high speeds. However, this was disproved when Null 06 was recording exerting large amounts of energy, which into its typical energy exertion, 10 minutes before its relocation. After these 10 minutes, Null 06 seems to warp out of existence and then back into existence at its new location, similar to that of antimatter particles. Antimatter of substance composed of subatomic particles that have the mass electrical electric charge and radiac element of the electrons, protons, and neutrons of ordinary matter, above, or which the electric charge and radiac Moment are opposite it in sign and constantly pops in and out of existence. Due to the similarity, it has been hypothesized that Nolo 6 is able to extract antimatter particles from areas within level 78. Because of this, it has been theorized that Nolo 6 relocates to areas within level 78 that contain an abundance of antimatter particles used as fuel, along with the large amounts of matter it consumes. After relocating to a new area, Null 06 will change its size, mass, and energy. However, the change in the energy emitted in each sighting is relative to its current mass. <sighs> when a wanderer enters Earth's level 8 and Null 06 is with Cindy, it will emit several bright beams, bright beams of light toward the Wanderer. These beams are capable of no-clipping Wanderers outside of level 78 space station enclosure and dragging Wanderers into Null 6 where 
it will use the victims as fuel. This behavior is most commonly exhibited by null sexes at a smaller mass. Behavior or discovery. Discovered, uh, gonna go with February 3rd, or 22 at 3 a.m. After No. Olu 6's hyper growth event and the discovery of the blips, it has been discovered that No. 6 tends to float toward nearby blips and enter them, causing No. Olu 6 to enter other levels. When No. Olu 6 enters the level, all matter within the level would be consumed by No. Olu 6, causing the level to be considered destroyed, despite their infinite properties. However, it is unknown as to how this happens. Typically, No. Olu 6 resides in another level for brief periods. These periods generally elect as approximately 5 to 10 minutes due to it needing the previously mentioned antimatter particles. When leaving the level in question and back to level 78, NOLA 6 needs at least one or two blips upon exit. When warping to another level from 78, NOLA 6 tends to grow to the size of a supermassive or ultramassive black hole allowing it to cause massive amounts of destruction inside the level in question. Due to this behavior, it has been noted that NOLA 6 is the cause of the destruction of several levels. This classification change has been recorded to occur moments before they, before, or every time it enters a blip. Due to this extensive observations, the research showed that NOLA 6 has some levels of sapience, making its behaviors difficult to predict. Note from Dr. Hawkins. After its most recent relocation, which occurred approximately one month ago, NOLA 6 was known to be around the coordinates of RA 17 in hours 35 minutes and 26 seconds, December 20. December. Negative 23 degrees, 37 and feet, 30 inches. Its matter consumption and energy release have been measured to be more intense than typical behavior. This suggests that NOLA 6 will exhibit a soon to be hyper growth period. By the way, I have no idea what any of that meant. Urgent notice. Didn't see this. NOLA 6 hyper growth event imminent. A mess estimated start of event. 2 p.m. on the on January 18, 2022. Video of Noah's six moments before the hypergrowth event. On January 3rd or 22 at 6 p.m., a large energy spike coming from Noah's six has been recorded at approximately 4 by 10 to the 40th power watt, similar to ton 618 a supermassive black hole. When observed, NOLA 6 could be seen consuming an excessive amount of matter, light, and energy, causing an expedited growth in size, mass, and tidal effects. Unlike typical black holes where the larger it gets weaker to tidal effects, NOLA 6's tidal effects strengthen with size. This hypergrowth was created and when studies about NOLA 6 showed that there was a period in time that it would grow to an incomprehensible size and mass, as they had allegedly done in the past. This event will likely cause space time anomalies such as other instances of NOLA 6, rifts in level 78, and the destruction of level 78. As of writing, NOLA 6 has reached a mass of 4.3 million MO. That's a weird looking L. And a diameter of 2.23.6. Yeah, I messed up the number. A diameter of 23. A diameter of 23.6 million kilometers. This makes NOLA 6 around the same size as a map as of the black hole within the Milky Way galaxy. It is suspected that NOLA 6's hypergrowth event will begin on January 8 at 4 at 2 p.m. However, it is unknown as to how NOLA 6 will behave or how massive it will be, yeah, as well as how level 78 would react. Post-hyper or growth event update. Dave Instant, 
January 19th, 22 at 3 p.m. Well, before this event, Nova 6 began to release an estimated 40 by a 10 to the 49th power watts of energy, more than the combined power of all light radiated by all the stars in the observable universe put together. Nola 6 then created a gravitational pull of a 3 by 10 to the 50th power or newtons, which exceeds the pla uh, force. This is a lot of math that I'm not understanding at all. You know, I can only count to four, so I don't know what... So these numbers don't really mean much to me, but they, they seem like big numbers. During this period of dramatic energy and gravitational exertion or production, Nola 6 grew to, the size, uh, grew to a mass of 73 billion ml and a radius of 2,000 by 10 to the 14th power kilometers, larger than the cur largest currently known black hole, Altan 618. Along with this, Nola 6 releases an electromagnetic field, creating an electromagnetic pulse effect throughout level 78, shutting down and destroying most equipment used to observe it. After the release of its electromagnetic field along with its rapid expansion, it created space-time anomalies dubbed blips. The, these blips are distorted areas of time and space, allowing the transfer of a wanderer to another location. Due to recent discovery and Nola 6's hypergrowth event, the integrity of level 78 is unstable and is likely to collapse in the near future. Here are just five blip instances. Biology. The anatomy of Nola 6 is out of a typical black hole, containing an event horizon, an acceleration disk, a photon sphere, a singularity, an innermost stable orbit, and a relativist jet. Yeah, that's just a link. I'm not clicking that. Although, as previously mentioned, all these change, all these things change in size and mass of, at random intervals. However, from recent observations, Nola 6 contains a high amount of antimatter particles. These particles are used to warp to different locations within level 78. Since Nola 6 depletes its antimatter particle count significantly if each time it warps, its average antimatter particle count cannot be reliably calculated. Do's and don'ts. Do stay far distance. Move away from it quickly. Leave level 78. Leave any levels that appear to be quickly disintegrating. Don't attempt to get closer. Don't attempt to enter it. <sighs> Entity 53. You trudge alone through the nearly high water, wary of the darkness surrounding you. As you read through Meg documentation on your phone for information relevant to the level you found yourself in. Deep insulation, huh? The crawl space creature? Well, this looks like a crawl space, sorta. It'd be best to read that. Entity number 53, Habitat, the insulation. Description: The cross-space creature is a vaguely humanoid, it being standing roughly seven feet tall. It has short rear legs that walks on, that walks on when not alerted to nearby prey. The cross-space creature has two long claw-like appendages in place of arms, which it uses to drag itself quickly along the ground when pursuing prey. These claws are incredibly dexterous, and as such, it can help prey swiftly upon using them when it reaches them. Killing most wanderers instantly. While its combat abilities are daunting, the cross-faced creature displays very limited intelligence and a weakened sense of sight, possibly due to the dark environment of the cross-space. It primarily navigates via sound, using only the sense of light to locate. It can quickly finish off its quarry when it has reached him. You really skim the behavior and 
all large portions of the page, as expected as well as specific measurements and estimates, as well as what is said in the description, with a bit more detail. Perhaps it might be more you an interesting if you weren't more concerned with your own survival right now. You reach the part you're really interested in. The survival guide. Survival Guide, except from Wanderer's Guide to the Backroom Swag U3. While the cross-sized creature may be rather freaky, there's nothing to worry about most of the time. It's only been reporting the all space area with an insulation. It hasn't been sighted in the deep insulation. If you're not in the crawl space, you've nothing to worry about. If you are, just keep quiet, no worries. All reports concerning the cross-space creature or information regarding it are to be sent immediately to an available mech officer for review. You breathe a small sigh of relief. No, not too loud. While you do wish you could make a bit less noise slash into the water, it's a relief to hear you are not in immediate danger, even if it is hard to believe. You recall from documentation of the deep insulation, where you are now, that cr catches of various supplies can be found fairly deep in. Perhaps, if you're lucky, you'll find a small crate of something valuable and get out of here with a bit more to barter with. There's a subtle noise of more water being moved out of the way, as if I footsteps from nearby. That doesn't seem to synchronize with your movements. You freeze and listen. Nothing. Can't put empty space without me having to highlight and check. You move forward a bit more cautiously and double check the documentation for the deep insulation. As you walk deeper in, you find an addendum added to it. A log of expeditions that were sent to recover the rare and valuable resources stashed in the sublevel. Expedition number one, crew sent three. This is a supply catch, 200 meters. Note, none. Expedition, expedition level two, crew sent four. This was a supply catch, one kilometer. Notes, none. Expedition four. Crew sent six. Ex this is the supply catch, three kilometers. It was determined at this point that supplies were becoming scarcer, though the reason why is not yet clear. Expedition number five. Crew sent five. This is the supply catch. Unknown. Note, Expedition 5 unexpectedly lost radio several hours after leaving the outpost. No members from Expedition 5 have returned at the time of writing. Further expeditions have been halted while these disappearances are investigated. Hmm. You stare at the screen in confused disbelief, continuing to move forward as you contemplate this new information. Your attention is suddenly drawn away as you find a supply catch on a small island where the concrete floor rises just enough to break to the surface of the water. You investigate it curiously. You must have been wandering for several miles by now. A couple of level keys, two bottles of almond water, a slab of royal rations, and a vial of liquid silence. An absolute jackpot. What could these invaluable supplies be doing way out here? What could these invaluable supplies be doing way out here? Then it clicked. 
The sound of water being disturbed by quick lunging motions grows louder behind you. The cross-faced creature is not nearly as dumb as we thought. Neat! This one has to load. Entity 54. Relics. NC Designation 54, Habitat, not applicable. Description, NC 54, referred to as Gralix by Meg Operatives, is an NC that manifests on solid surfaces as simple animate drawings. Behaviors, Gralix is a friendly yet mischievous is being known to follow and play around with any wanderers who crosses its path. This ending does show genuine kindness when wanderers are in danger, instead trying to lead said wanderers to a safer area or level. Many claim that NC-54 was vital in, survival, in, surviving in surviving dangerous situations. Wow, I can't read apparently. And at the end, they showed signs of happiness when they were safe. NC-54 often plays pranks and games on wanderers, much to some people's chagrin. Games in Z54 will play include hide and seek, charades, and tag. The, prank is, the pranks NC54 usually plays are lighthearted and generally harmless. However, the indie seems to is, seems to struggle to understand the limits of human endurance for its more risky pranks. NC54 enjoys interacting with large groups of people, especially each other due to their willingness is to play. When interacting with large groups, NC-54 would often jump around excitedly and cheer. NC-54 responds to a variety of names, some of which include Gralix, used by Meg Operatives, coined by Detective, I mean by Operative Lime, Scribble Pants, used by Level 158 residents, especially LJU members, Kilroy, used by the originals on level 5, and Mr. Lanky, see Discovery. Biology, NC-54 or manifests as a simple drawing of a cartoonish figure. These figures can vary wild wildly in appearance and medium. It appears that Entity-54 cannot manifest as complex drawings, as attempts by the Entity seem to cause exhaustion and even pain from overexertion. NC-54 can shift its form as it pleases within the parameters of simple drawings. The NC can transfer from different solid surfaces as long as those surfaces touch each other. NC-54 can shift rapidly between forms, change its size and even no-clip by entering a corner, usually appearing in a different section of the level it's currently on. <sighs> Wanderers who've witnessed this no clip describe it as NC-54 shrinking into nothing or falling into a black hole, or how falling into a black hole might look. It often exaggerates its emotions to a comical degree, using comic lexicon to further display emotions. Some hypothesize NC-54 does this to make up for the fact it cannot speak. NC-54 is able to interact with any drawn on object. It will be seen drinking and eating any drawn food and tripping over and falling on graffiti, often smushing the graffiti in the process. NC-54 is unable to interact with our dimension, either transferring onto the attempted manip manipulated surface or going underneath it. Discovery. The first recorded manifestation of NC-54 was in a lot of level 11, often used by children at the level to play in. It took the form of a stick man at, at, at the children dubbed Mr. Lanky, who then would participate in games of tag, hide and seek, and enter its games of make-believe, often accentuated with chalk drawings made by the children. 
SCD-54 was brought to the attention of the EMAC when a parent witnessed SCD-54 having a tea party with their child and was seen in moving and pouring make-believe tea. The following transcript is a short interview between Meg operative late of Hoppy Jackson and the previously mentioned child, whose parent has requested to keep anomalous. I'm gonna call them Sally, because why not? Hello, oh, Sally. It's all right with you if I ask you a few questions about your friend, Mr. Lanky? Okay, he's really funny and kind of weird and, um, um, <laughs> I see, you're excited. Can you tell me how you met him? Mr. Lanky just showed up one day. Craig got some chalk from the mark art. Presumably from an outpost run by the Maltmark group. So he, um, we uh, started drawing. We started making this really big spaceship with everything, a pool, some snacks, the engine. Those are important for stuff that he says. It was lengthy, he came out of a crack in outer space. He started flying around, you know? Since space is super dangerous and Emily had to draw a room for him. How fun, so he played with you, you guys? Yep, when we had to go home, he looked sad though, so I made him a tall glass house just like ours to live in. He was really happy, beaming, I think. I hear mommy call all smile, all sad. How kind of you, Sally. Thanks. Did you guys play with him after that? Yeah, of course, he likes to play hide and seek the most. So many cracks to hide in. <laughs> He always forgets his hat sticks out of the crack. Postscript. Considering Gralix is able to hide in cracks in the wall completely, it's safe to say that this so could be findable for the kids. It seemed to take notice of me interviewing these kids, or the kids told it about me. It waves to me on a wall whenever I pass by in a general direction. I'd like to interview the ENC directly, but I don't want to play a long game of charades to do so. Operative Poppy. Now we have NC-55, Acathasia. That's an interesting name. Wonder how long this will be. Huh, not that long at all. Oh, that's why. All right. <sighs> we can handle a little bit of blood here, I'm quite sure. At least reading about it. Come on now. I would read the Sorcerer Detective, I can handle a little bit of blood as much as I can handle the main character of a, a thing I'm reading a thing, or getting their arm cut off. Anyway, NCID is 55. Habitats are various. Class Bactel. I don't know what that means. I actually usually don't, don't read that part. Description. NC55, codenamed Athesia, is a blood-borne pathogen characterized by a symptoms of restlessness, is insomnia and onset hyperkinesia, inability to control movements, muscle spasms, and general hyperactivity. When a creature's blood has been entangled by NC55, finds its way into, onto a water's skin, the pathogen begins to burrow through the skin pores and spread into the new host's bloodstream. From there, NC55 tra tra travels to the spinal column, where it begins to interfere with the host's ability to control their body. On by by laying native signals down the spine and setting its own. While I might li not like spine things, I think this is fine. 
Stage 1. Once 3 hours after contacting entity, after contracting entity 55, the host motor cortex will begin to lose control of the body, resulting in slight shaking and sudden spasms. At this phase, the athesis cells will not are fully integrated into the host body and can be flushed out with a glass of salt water. Stage 2. At the 4 to 8 hour mark, the host will undergo a period of temporary paralysis, followed by complete loss of control over their lower body. All muscles from the waist down begin to spasm uncontrollably. There is a small chance of this, at this stage that the host's immune system will eject NC55 and host will recover. This has only happened in approximately 25% of reported cases. Stage 3. At the 5 to 9 hour mark, the effects of Azia begin to spread to the upper body. If the host is not properly restrained, the host's neck may be snapped in the resulting flailing. If the host survives this, this stage, NC55 appears to gain sentience. The Athetia's parasite will do anything in its power to transfer to other wanderers, sometimes referring to be its host's body for months on end. Its plan usually culminates in a super spreader event, in which the current host's blood is transferred to a large number of people. Hosts. While wanderers are the primary target of NC55, they are not the only creatures capable of contracting it. There have also been cases reported of hounds, vo Opus, hens, and domestic dogs and cats from the front rooms. Discovery Patient Zero Edna Cornwell Prior to her infection, Ms. Cornwell was a small business owner in level 11, running a moderately successful pastry shop. On March 7, 2020, I mean 1926, actually, wait, that doesn't make sense. I mean, it's going to go 2026. Neighbors and passerby report muffled screaming and loud banging between 10 and 16 a.m. and 6.24 p.m. I know they use a 24-hour clock. I do too, but I'm still going to translate it. The next day, the Meg received an email from Ms. Cornwell detailing her observations of a previously undocumented pathogen, now known as NCD55, although nobody could recreate her experiments or verify her results. An on-site physician at Base Alpha determined her conclusions to be plausible. Throughout the next month, Ms. Cornwell quickly rose up, up the ranks of, a, of the scientific branch, advancing research on liquid pain at an astonishing rate. On April 23, 26, a ceremony was held at Base Alpha to celebrate her promotion to Assistant Co-Director of the Meg Scientific Branch. Some 600 people RSVP'd to this event, most of which were former patrons of the now defunct pastry shop. All gathered in the auditorium. Edna Cornwell did not arrive on stage at the designated time. When Director Feyran went to search for her, he found that the doors were all locked from the outside. The lights turned off. The fire alarm was activated, and the sprinkler showered blood upon all 600 attendees. When backup arrived, the base's water supply was found drained. In the a storage tank was a slice disfigured and exsanguinated corpse of Edward Cornwell. All attendees appear to be alive and unharmed. However, all have since gone missing or been found dead, except for Director Feyren. His consciousness has been completely dominated by the Acathasia parasite transferred by Miss Cornwell's blood. Many 
Many tests were performed on the specimen to clarify what parts of Cornwell's testimony were misinformation from the, the parasite. Sentience. Nobody knows exactly how NC55 gains sentience. The most popular theory is that the parasite repurposes the host's brain, slightly restructuring the pathways to fit its own needs. After this, it can nudge the brain in the right direction by inserting electrical signals into various neurons, eventually creating new thoughts and a new mind. Of course, this NZ is most likely a virus, a creature so small and simple some don't even consider it as life. Nothing on that scale could perform tasks so sophisticated. Then again, a few eyewitnesses have seen uh, Caltasia stop impersonating its host, and descriptions of its personality have all been eerily similar. All instances come with the same cocky attitude and superiority complex. Is there something more at play here? Do's and don'ts. Do, if you recognize yourself having small muscle spasms, drink some salt water. One to two cups should be enough. Do stay at least five meters away from anyone who has con contracted Entity 55. Don't ignore any spasms you develop. Don't attend any large gatherings. And finally, we have Entity 56. Oh, it's really in the document. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Entity number, not applicable. Habitat, not applicable. Description, there is no Entity 56. I apologize for the confusion. There's gotta be more to this, right? But no, it looks like that's it. Oh well. This has been a 5 bit background sensitivities. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to do in next time, which is not going to be tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!